has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. It's Pharrell on a bench, coast to coast, in the biggest way possible. Hanging out of bed, see the world getting a bad apple with a bad attitude. Hanging around a bunch of bad, out of bad, take bad life, bad do bad breath, bad attitude, bad vibes. We are live in the Magic City studios in the Pharrell Palace, right across the river through the woods from our grannies out on the back deck again. This time, thumbing up with a fatty of the northern lights, indica style in New York City. The Big Apple. Ooh. People dressed in plastic bags, directing traffic, some kind of action, shake it up, should do, but I'm up in the come around, fuck the fuck, the party up, rats on the west side, bed bugs uptown, what a mess, this town's a tatter, my brain splattered all over Manhattan, should do, be shake it up, oh, woo, woo, I think I might have caught some from Keith, should do, be, yeah, yeah, it's only rock and roll, but I like it, like it, yes, I do, but I like it, hey, what's getting I'm Pharrell, along with your boy, Carver High this afternoon. Mafia running it with Hayden Fried, LTN in Kansas City, Missouri. And we got a birthday roll call on a midweek, Where Do You Hurt Wednesday. Zach Wilson tapping his mom's friends, 23 today. Wonder who's coming out of the birthday cake tonight in Florham. Ronald Jones II, 25. Derwin James, 26. Zach Gallons, uh, 27 today. Kendrick Nunn, 27. Quan Alexander, 28. Dante Fowler, 28. Todd Gurley, 28. Young Ho Koo, 28. Tyrod Taylor, 33. Virgin Green, 34. Matt Joyce, 38. Ryan Lochte, 38. Mark Reynolds, former Major Leaguer, 39. Ahmad Carroll, 39. Chris Jenkins, 43. Tom Brady, 45. He's got more juice than Jesus. Troy Gloss, 46. Nate McMillan, 58. Sid Bream. Oh, the humanity of Sid Bream sliding home on Mike Lavalier, the worst birthday of the year. Screw you, Sid, you backstabber. Mike Gaminsky, 63. I hated him, too, because he went to Duke. My dad never shut up about Gaminsky, either. Shut up. Marcel Dion, Hall of Famer, legend, Kings. Lance Alworth, 82. Marv Levy, legend. 97 years old. You got to be kidding me. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> we got a lot going on today. Afternoon ball happening right now. Carver High is livid. The Mariners and Luis Castillo owning the Yankees and Garrett Cole 6-1. to one. They're all over them in the Bronx. At least everybody's getting tan. It's really sunny out there. Jays and Rays. The Jays won that game, I think, three to two over the Rays at the trap. The Astros lead the Red Sox four to nothing in the fourth. Guards up five two on the D-backs. Bottom six. Twins three one on the Tigers. Top seven. O's Rangers one one. Top three. Royals down one zip to the White Sox in a rain delay in Chicago. Phillies beat the Braves three to one. That Yankee game going to the Seventh inning, we'll do the lion's share. All we do is make you money. Bob Nightingale, USA Today, will talk baseball. And the horrible news of the passing of the great Ben Scully out in Los Angeles last night. We'll talk about the iconic broadcaster at great length today. Uh, I got a lot of stories for you. A couple of them you'll like. We'll go through all the baseball games. We got Mike Rizzo on the show today. Uh, we got Dave Dombrowski on the show today talking about his Phillies. Twins president Derek Falvey on the show today. Who? Jorge Mateo with a big uh, home run last night. He had two of them. We got a Devers sighting with a home run. We got Tony La Russa. Is he asleep on this interview? We welcome all of our radio affiliates to Coast to Coast on a midweeker. We got Sirius XM Channel 159, our satellite home sports map radio network out of Houston Sports, Byline USA out of the City by the Bay, Deepak holding it down for us, Mightier 1090, ESPN in San Diego, near to you wanna, do you wanna? We got uh, Devin Williams of the Brewers, not happy about his friend Hader getting dealt. Mike DeCourcy is on from the Sporting News today. And he will go off per usual. We got A.J. Preller. 
We got a David Fletcher home run for you. We got a Mookie Betts home run for you. All of tonight's games will break it all down. Plus today in Carver High history, that's always fun. Dubsy Anderson previewing another way for Carver High to make money this week starting tomorrow at the Wyndham Championships. Carver High loves staying at the Wyndham. Greg Norman, uh, news today. Now a golf lawsuit. Here they go, the antitrust lawsuits filing in uh, with the Live Golf and PGA at war. We got Kevin Stefanski on the show today. Baker Mayfield, Kyle Shanahan. Very exciting. Plus, Tom Brady on his birthday. He's going to go to a strip club tonight. The mayor of Miami, Joe Ranieri, joins us. You know Joe's going to talk about Stephen Ross and all the tampering and troublemaking going on down on Collins Ave and South Beach, South FLA with all that gorgeous. <laughs> we got a lot more than that. We got Nathaniel Hackett. We got AFC West odds, a little Najee Harris news. Chris Boswell got rich in the Steel City, 20 milliones to kick footballs. And we got a win total for my Steelers. Rams are limiting Matt Stafford because he's got a little elbow tendonitis going on. Van Jefferson is having knee surgery. Uh, the Cowboys wide receiver James Washington carted off the field during practice yesterday. Jags won't play Trevor Lawrence or ATN in the Hall of Fame game. That's tomorrow night football tomorrow night, folks. Go with us. Grab a cold one. It's coast to coast. Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. They played last game. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Rogers and the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell, coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game pass. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a four and a In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, time. The major, the PGA champion. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The morning after. You still believe the Astros and the Yankees are on a tier of their own in the American League? Yeah, I really do. I, I, I think that you can't discount Tampa Bay, and I think that regardless of what they end up doing or not doing in the next 24 hours, they're always going to play very sound baseball, and you can sort of envision October baseball with Tampa Bay winning a few games in the postseason 3-2 to two or 4-3 to three and just sort of piecing their way through it. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. Uh, I, I've just played my narrative for the under nine and a half. I suppose we should play the over for nine and a half. The reason why it would be set at nine and a half is one, I think some people are wagering that Sean Watson doesn't miss any time, right? You know, there would people be out there who say, look, if Watson's camp is appealing to get it down to zero games, then there's a chance that, you know, the Browns become like a 12 win team. The Sports Grid Network. Sports Professor Rick Harrow and the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your daily numbers game. Well, Platteville, Davey, Flagstaff, bylines from the past, spring, summer, fall, workout football, now basically gone. 10 of the 30 teams actually don't practice at their practice facility and only Three, the Cowboys in California, the Redskins in Virginia, and the Panthers in South Carolina don't train in their own state. Why the difference? Well, public money was important, but not as big as the television dollars right now from a local perspective. The sponsors are also generating facilities next to the main stadium. And for player convenience, some free agency, they want to do that too. A sea change, gone are the regional facilities, 
But now we have a brand new day. Want the thrill of a parlay bet packed into one single game? Then you're going to love one game parlay from BetMGM. Couldn't be easier. Just pick your game, select your bets, then combine them into a single parlay. One game, bigger payouts. Now you're betting with the king of sports books. Sign up today and your first bet is risk-free up to $1,000 when you use bonus code One Game. Win big with One Game Parlay from BetMGM. Honestly, the uh, BetMGM app, I found it to be more important than oxygen and water. As you know, Carver High, there are things in life that we need. And at the top of my uh, priority list is the BetMGM app. You know, if you bet $10 on any major league game, they'll give you $200 if either team hits a home run. You heard me. Use the bonus code MLBHR2022. That's MLB Home Run 2022. At 10 bucks, win 200 if either team hits a home run. Speaking of home runs, the Wink Man <laughs> just lifted one out, Carver High, at Yankee Stadium. If you don't have sunblock on today out there, you're going to go home cherry red. But the balls have been flying out all day. It started early and often on our boy Ace Ventura. It certainly did. Uh, this is the type of day, if you're out at the stadium to see the Yankees, uh, you just go get drunk out in left field and get that sunburn. Go get yourself a hot dog and just call it a day. Uh, rough first inning for Garrett Cole out in the Bronx this afternoon, Scotty. How about six runs in the oh. first inning? The most he's ever allowed in the first inning of a start in his career. Three homers, Eugenio Suarez, Carlos Santana, and uh. Jared Kelnick all go deep uh. off of Cole. Puts him in a 6 nothing hole. Uh, and the Yankees just simply, Scotty, have not been able to climb out of it. You mentioned the Wink Man. Uh, he got on the board here in the seventh, hit one off of Peralta. Seven to one now. The Mariners lead the Yankees. And listen, Castillo making his first start for Seattle today, Scotty, has looked very, very good. That's twice this year. He's pitched excellent against the Yankees in the Bronx, once with the Reds, now with Seattle. I know they got Montas instead of him. If it would have cost a little bit more, I hope they don't regret this down the line, Scotty. They didn't get this guy instead of Frankie Montas. Well, you and I both said they got to get Castillo, not uh, Frankie Montas, for weeks. We were on Castillo, and then when we saw him pitch for the Reds in the Bronx and they lost that series, it was just absolutely humiliating uh, to lose two of three to the Reds. And they could have lost all three to the Reds when you think about it. Yeah. But Castillo had him eaten out of his palms again today. I think he's actually more brilliant today than he was in that start. And here's the real news. They're going to face him again next week in Seattle. It only gets worse from here. And then Cole's going to go up there and pitch and probably get lit up again because they're obviously not afraid of Cole. Yep, uh, the Yankees go out on a long road trip, Scotty, after this game today against Seattle. They go to St. Louis this weekend for three. They then go to Seattle to take on the Mariners again, and then they double back all the way to Boston for next right. weekend to take on the Red Sox, so a long three-city road trip. Well, that'll be their relief is going to Boston. That'll be like, thank you for this. <laughs> thank God uh, we get a break because they stink. But uh, Saturday, it looks like Montas will go. He's been uh, not able to join the Yankees yet because of a death in the family. I think his in-law died or something. He'll start yes. Saturday uh, at Bush against the Cardinals. Let me say this. I got to tell you, and obviously, I don't want this to happen. As you know, I'm completely homerized milk toast on the Yankees. But I don't think they can beat Seattle or the Astros, so they're not winning the World Series. Look, uh, they got to show me against the Astros. We've said that a billion times. Uh, it is prove it in October. Uh, until I see them do it, I don't know if I necessarily believe it. All right, there's a lot of other games going on this afternoon. The guards have a 5-2 lead over the Diamondbacks in Cleveland. They've got homers from Ahmed Rosario and Gonzalez. The Twins have a 3-1 lead over the Tigers. 
Uh, Carlos Correa put them ahead in that one. 1-1 one, one going to the fourth in Arlington. Orioles looking for the sweep against the Rangers this afternoon. Red Sox looking for the sweep also in Houston, Scotty. But Trey Mancini, welcome to the Astros. He has gone yard. 4 nothing. They lead Boston and a rain delay in Chicago. one nothing. The White Sox lead the Royals looking to take two out of three there. One other game in the afternoon starts in about 45 minutes from now in D.C. between the Mets and the Nationals, Scotty. The Bassett Hound gets the ball for the Mets today. Annabelle Sanchez for the Nats. Heavy lumber, of course, minus 300 uh, for the Mets after losing last night with DeGrom, which we'll talk about later. Total of nine. Yeah, I'm on the Mets again. I know I got burned on uh, several games, but I was lit on fire by the Nationals last night in the loss uh, in D.C. DeGrom pitched well. The Mets got beat. It is what it is. Uh, Obviously, uh, that's embarrassing. It's a minor league team you're losing to. They've got to turn it around today and beat up on this team. This guy's ERA is around eight runs a game. I mean, it is time to win this series and go off on them with big bats tonight. I expect all kinds of balls flying out of there tonight. We will talk about the rest of the baseball later, Scotty, but we must uh, now bring up last night uh, the sad passing, a major loss, not just for baseball but for everybody, Uh, iconic Dodgers broadcaster Vin Scully uh, passed away last night at the age of 94. They announced it while the Dodgers were playing. One strike away. Sandy into his windup. Here's the pitch. Swung out and missed a perfect game. Fernando ready in the strike two pitch. Is hit back to the box. Dribbling to second. Samuel on the bag. Close to first double play. Fernando Valenzuela has pitched a no-hitter at 10-17 in the evening of June the 29th, 1990. If you have a sombrero, throw it to the sky. Can you believe this ball game at Shea? Oh, brother. So the winning run is at second base with two out, three and two to Mookie Wilson. Little roller up along first, behind the bag, it gets through Buckner, here comes Knight and the Mets win it! High fly ball into right field, she is gone! Gibson. In a year that has been so improbable, the impossible has happened. You know, uh, I gotta tell you, so... It's very, very hard for me uh, today to learn of his passing. I have to be honest. I I think he's the greatest sports broadcaster that ever lived. Um, You know, they talk about him being the best baseball announcer. Um, He's just flat out the best broadcaster uh, for sports that ever lived. Uh, I had the great honor of knowing him uh, and, you know, meeting him and talking to him and, and seeing him several times. I lived in Los Angeles for a long time and I was a regular at Dodger Stadium. And, you know, I was, you know, pretty huge on the radio out there. So I was so lucky and blessed uh, to meet everyone in sports. I got to meet them all. Uh, I can't fathom that I met him and talked to him Uh, and John Wooden and Chick Hearn and Bob Miller. I mean, what a lucky guy I am. I have to tell you, my hero was Howard Cosell. I never met Howard Cosell, but he was my hero. Uh, The greatest people that I've ever been friends with and known, uh, David Letterman, Howard Stern, who I worked for for almost a decade, and, um, you know, Bob Knight. Uh, People can say whatever they want. That guy is a titan. I don't care what anybody says. Uh, And the fact that I got to spend time around Vin Scully and listen to him on the radio every day when they played on the East Coast and they had four o'clock games in L.A. Listening to him on the radio was better than sex. Your heart 
It's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. Pro Football Doc has found its new home right here with Sports Injury Central. And with that comes our expansion into other sports. Sports Injury Central will give you nonstop exclusive injury analysis from experienced team doctors from all three major sports. Doctors with resumes that include teams like the Chicago Bulls, the Texas Rangers, and the LA Chargers. So gain a fantasy DFS and betting edge right now for free at SICscore.com. The early line. We talked about it a lot yesterday, Kevin. What would that have looked like? What was a trade piece going to be? And can you imagine if, let's just say, they had to give up three of their top four prospects, but you got Otani at the deadline? My goodness, if you want to talk about back page in New York City and owning the tabloids for the rest of the summer, that would have been sensational to watch. But even there, the Yankees, the best team in baseball record-wise, added on and got a pretty good troop back here yesterday to sort of move forward. And maybe they're not done yet. Only on Sports Grid. The morning after. What's the atmosphere like for sports betting in Massachusetts right now? My first reaction was, it's about damn time. My second reaction was, is this real? Because it also happened at like 6, 7 a.m. in the morning. I was watching it until I went to bed that night because once 3 a.m. hit, I said, okay, I'm going to trust the process here. I'm going to set an early alarm anyway. The lawmakers, the decision makers, the legislators, the people that be got this right for Massachusetts. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. On Soto, going to Ugh. the Padres. Look out, a massive deal. Josh Bell would probably be the number two guy on the market in terms of a power hitter that was available. Go figure, he moves to San Diego along with Soto at 23, the most dangerous man in baseball with the most dangerous lethal bat in baseball. The Sports Grid Network. The brighter the lights, the bigger the stakes. Hunt or be hunted. Know your prey. This is a whole new jungle. This is The Lion's Share. Brought to you by BetMGM. You know, I got to tell you, Carver, one of the great luxuries I've had of being old is... Uh, that I've been able to experience, uh, you know, a lot of stuff in sports over the last 50 plus years. And one thing that I'm certain of is that the two greatest storytellers in the history of sports, as a writer, it was Jim Murray of the Los Angeles Times. No one, and I'll, I'll ask Mike DeCourcy, like, I'll ask him flush. No one, no one can touch Jim Murray. And... On the radio, no one has ever even come within from here to the moon of Vin Scully calling a baseball game. His descriptions of things going on around him at Chavez Ravine, in the stands, in the game, the weather, the sunset, his stories and his just magnifying a game to a level like unequaled by anyone ever. I have never, being around LA and listening to that guy and reading Jim Murray columns, I mean, it was the greatest exposure I've ever had to, you know, again, greatness in my entire career. I mean, I have seen a million really good writers and really good broadcasters, and they're not in the realm of those two men. Jim Murray, Vince Scully, 
the best ever, period. No question about it. Uh, and as you said, not just baseball. Uh, called, uh, I heard the highlight this morning, called the Montana to Dwight Clark to catch uh, NFC title game. The Masters, as you mentioned, uh, did a lot. Vince Scully, uh, without question, the greatest. He's of from time, here. Uh, when He's from New York. Him. He went to Fordham. Yeah, yeah. He's from the Bronx. He lived yeah. in Brooklyn. He's a New Yorker through and through. And then yeah. he, you know, unfortunately uh, had the luxury for all of us of moving yeah. to Lipstick City yeah. and being there for 67 years, whatever it is. All I know yeah. is uh, lost his first wife, uh, lost his second wife to ALS. I think he has six kids. One of them died. The son died in a helicopter crash and he's got like 20 grandchildren. The guy never, like he was not a public figure in the sense of these celebrities and, and movie stars that all want to be seen everywhere on red carpets and go out in public and have paparazzi chase him. This guy went from stadium to home like no one. He stayed at home. He was a homebody. He never went out and looked for attention. He never bragged. He was never look at me. I think that really made him uh, unique and special. Everyone today, uh, me, everybody, everybody's such an ass hat. Everybody just thinks they're so wonderful. And that guy was the personification of greatness. I, I looked up to him so much. It killed me that he died. Let's get now, Scotty, to the lion's share, of course, brought to you by Ooh. Bet MGM. Looking for more tickets here tonight. Last night, uh, we did get a couple of the unders. DeGrom stayed under. Christian Javier stayed under. Uh, Nolan Arenado went yard for me last night with a little tater. Uh, so good night on the lion's share. Let's keep it going here tonight. We will start with Sandy Alcantara for the Marlins tonight at home against the Reds. Seven and a half is the number. Minus 120 to the over, minus 115 to the under. I'll let you know this pattern, Scotty. So in the last six starts for Alcantara, double digits, under the total. Double digits, under the total. Double digits, under the total. What does that mean tonight? I guess he's going double digits again. Give me the over. Back and forth he goes. Let's get it. <laughs> yeah, listen. This guy is going to mow down that minor league baseball team all night long. Double digits. Next, we go to the Cardinals and the Cubbies in St. Louis. Miles Mikolas going tonight. Four and a half is the number. Minus 155 to the over, plus 110 to the under. He is under this total, Scotty, in five of his last six starts. He did have nine, his highest of the season, against the Cubs back in late June. I do not care. I will go under tonight, the four and a half at plus 110. Wow. Uh, I'm going to go over. I, I think the Cubs are uh, atrocious, and I can't even believe how stupid they are uh, that they didn't trade uh, <laughs> <know>. Contreras and, <laughs> and Happ. And, uh, they're such a mess. I mean, five strikeouts is all I need. I mean, he'll have that by the third inning. Next, uh, we would never pass by Otani on the lion's share. We're going to get a little double dip of Otani tonight. And why, Scotty? How about the last six starts? His number's eight and a half tonight, minus 125 to the over. His last six starts, 11, 11, 12, 10, 11, and 13. Double digits in six straight starts. He faces the A's tonight. We'll keep going over. I mean, the A's are uh, atrocious, so he's going to mow them down like he's mowing his yard. I mean, this guy is just going to go off. And, uh, you know, thank God they didn't trade him because I said before, you might as well fold the franchise up because Trout never plays anymore. All they have, there's no reason to be an Angels fan except for Otani. There's literally no reason to buy a ticket or watch them on TV except for Otani. How stupid would they have been to trade that guy? Like, I mean, honestly, uh, some of these guys that run these baseball teams, where do they find these people? Idiotville? Is there an Idiotville? Is there a place we could actually live? Idiotville? And you could just get away with things because everybody around you is so effing stupid? Honestly, like, can you imagine they were talking about trading this guy? I wouldn't try to give that guy a half a billion dollars right now to play the rest of his career there. Next, Blake Snell and the what could be new look Padres tonight. We don't know yet uh, if Soto and Drury and Bell and everybody's going to be in the lineup. I'm sure they will be out there. Snell, six and a half 
for the Padres against the Rockies. He's gone over this number in three of his last five. He's actually faced the Rockies three times, Scotty, in like the last six weeks. And under in two out of the three, five, five, and seven. I could lean to the under again tonight for Snell. Yeah, but I actually am going to go over based on the fact that, like, yesterday they were down 3 nothing. I told you they'd sweep the doubleheader. They blew them out. They scored, like, 13 runs in that first yes. game and blew them out. Second game, they won 3-2. to two. They are now officially on cocky street. They're winning every game they play, and they haven't even suited up Soto and Bell yet. And I think they are on a roll for the rest of the season into the playoffs. They're going to be a very dangerous team. And if this guy were to find his stuff on top of Musgrove and Darvish and Hader in the bullpen, Christ almighty, are they dangerous looking? But the Dodgers have won 25 of 30, and they are not afraid of them. And, I mean, that battle right there, the shore battle between L.A. and San Diego right now in baseball, it's, you know, better than the Subway Series. It's certainly better than the freeway series. That might be the best thing going in baseball right now, what's about to happen out west. Uh, they do play each other this weekend. Going to be a lot of fun. All right, tater time. Let's do the homers. I'm going to start with Andrew McCutcheon, Scotty, back in his old stomping grounds of Pittsburgh. Actually has three homers against the Buccos this year. He's in PNC tonight, plus 400 for Kutch. God almighty. I mean, how many knives do you have to take out of my chest? I say no. <laughs> I'm not having No. It. No for Kutch. All right. Otani's pitching. We're going for the over again with the Ks. Of course, we're going to try to little combo meal that, Scotty, combo with Otani meal. to go yard two at 375. Combo meal. And can I get the spicy mustard with that, please? Yes, of course we could figure that out for you. We might actually do that tonight. I might make that parlay. Uh, CJ Crone, yes, uh, Snell and the Padres looking good. Crone, Scotty, has beat up the Padres this year, has a bunch of homers against him, has hit Snell well in the past, and a high price for him tonight, plus 400. I'm taking a shot with Crone. Why not? I mean, I, I have nothing else nice to say about the Rockies. I'll go with it. You know why I'm going with it? Because you always pick these no-name hacks out of a basket and they hit them. Arenado, it happens every night. So I'm going to go with you on this dude uh, to hit a home run tonight, Crone. I'm also one more guy who's kind of crawling out of the hole that he's been in this year, and that is Max no Muncy. Hit a homer the other night against the Giants. Plus 500 here. Why? He hits Wood, Alex Wood, very well who he faces tonight. I'm going to try to stay hot with Max Muncy tonight, Scotty. Well, I hope you get the nickel, and I just don't believe it because we he hasn't nickels, been good baby. all year, so I'm not buying it. Give but me the nickels. you both of them, Crone and him. I want more nickels. Keep putting the nickels in the pocket. Football season's around the corner. We need to start stacking them up. Uh, game props for tonight. We said that Alcantara's going for the Marlins. How about Marlins win against the Reds, Scotty, and under – Eight and a half tonight at plus 125. Marlins win under eight and a half plus 125. I mean, that is, uh, you know, in my view, just money. That is just flat out, sure thing money. That guy is no more giving up eight runs and fly a kite. Give me that bet. Six ways till Sunday. Now we'll go to the over side of things. How about the Cardinals to beat the Cubbies again tonight at Bush? And this one going over Seven and a half at plus 170. Cardinal win over seven and a half plus 170. Yes. Let's yes, go. All day. Let's go. And the final one I've got for you is the Brewers and the Buckos at PNC. Oh, God. Both teams to score three or more runs. Both teams to score three or more at plus 115. Runs for both teams tonight. I like that. Uh, three runs is nothing. I think that'll be a wild game tonight at PNC in the sticky air. The ball will be flying out into the river. I think they both go way over three. You mean kind of like that O'Neill Cruz one last night that we're going to play on coast to coast later on? Your boy <laughs> O'Neill Cruz going to straightaway center Jolly field Roger. last night? Wow. Raise it. Can't clear the decks, baby. Uh, the lion's share. Bet MGM for a Wednesday night.
The Lion's Share, presented by BetMGM. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. People are going to the betting window betting and betting them the now rim. before the trade takes place. How Diamond dare they bets. do what's fiscally responsible? See how it plays out. Buffalo's going all in right Football now. Football full them. circle. All their chips in the middle of the table. It's do or die for And Godwin being out. They, they've had a little bit of a shakeup. In-game live all access. You could take the points. You could take the money line. And we had to go to San Jose, too. Maybe a small play on San Jose. I'm going to go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow. In game live. Prime time. He plays time. like he did in game five. They are going to be all good in game six at home. But boy, you want to give the eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination. Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. The morning after. Georgie, what was your reaction to this law getting legalized? Took longer than it should have. The state lost out on a lot of money, but now no more do people need to go over, drive over to the states and the borders that are surround Massachusetts and shoot. I can go to Encore Casino with their beautiful sports book and have fun there. Watching games like I did for the Big Ten Football Championship last year. And also at the same wow. time, hey, bet prop bets. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. Uh, I've just played my narrative for the under nine and a half. I suppose we should play the over for nine and a half. The reason why it would be set at nine and a half is one, I think some people are wagering that Sean Watson doesn't miss any time, right? You know, there would people be out there who say, look, if Watson's camp is appealing to get it down to zero games, then there's a chance that, you know, the Browns become like a 12 win team. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. I think the Yankees did really nicely at the deadline, to be honest with you. I did too. The one that did not move the needle a little bit for me was the Montas deal. It's not a bad pickup by any stretch of the imagination, but I have a little bit of concerns about his shoulder going forward. He's already been on the IL a couple of times, and this is a team that desperately needs not just a starter, but a starter that will remain on the field for the rest of the year. It can't be Garrett Cole all year long. Nestor Cortez has hit a couple of snags. The Sports Grid Network. All right, Carver High, I hit the uh, Phillies over the Braves today, 3-1. to one. I hit the Rays, 3-2 over the Jays. So both of those finals are in. White Sox up 1-0 in a rain delay in Chicago. Orioles, Rangers 1-1 in the fifth. The Twins 3-1 in the eighth on the Tigers in many. Guards up 7-2 on the D-backs in the eighth. Uh, bottom five Astros up 4-0 still on the Red Sox. And the Mariners, 7-3 on the Yankees. I bet on Seattle. I bet on Seattle because of Castillo. I bet on the Astros. And I bet on Cleveland. I bet on the Twins. And I bet on Texas, believe it or not. And the White Sox. All those games still going on. So, already hit two. I'm up in all the rest except for uh, the 1-1 game in Arlington. So, what about last night? Yeah, well, let's get into a couple things there. Uh, and Castellanos had the big blow for the Phillies today, Scotty. Uh, of course, that game was tied late, and he, that was his first homer in over a month uh, for Nick Castellanos, who's getting paid a lot of money for the Phillies. They needed him today. Uh, the Mets and the Nationals are getting going soon. Rubber match in D.C. this afternoon. Last night, Scotty, yes, the Mets lost, but really it was all about Jacob deGrom making his first start in 13 months 
for the Metropolitans. He goes five innings, three hits, one run, six strikeouts, only threw 59 pitches. Uh, so a good performance, and he felt good today, uh, the next day after. Here's DeGrom afterwards, Scotty, talking about how he felt. How'd you feel out there? Felt good. Um, you know, definitely had some nerves early on, but, um, you know, like I said, it's been a year since I've been out there, a year plus, so um, definitely exciting to be back out there. You know, uh, wish for a different outcome, but, you know, I'm happy to be back out there. I know you're someone who says that you get nervous before every start still. You mentioned the other day that you thought it might feel like your debut. Was it a heightened bit of nerves tonight? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, like I said, how long it's been since I've – Pitching a major league baseball game, uh, there were definitely a little more ner uh, nerves than normal. When did it kind of hit you that you were back? Um, probably after that first uh, inning. When they you know, wanted you the to ball. get out there, and uh, I mean, how about once, that? Uh, you know, it's kind of how it is. Whenever I'm uh, pitching normally, you're nervous leading up to them. Once you get out there, you kind of settle in, you know. And this one lasted a little longer, so probably at the, until the end of the first. You know, I don't know about you, Carver High, but uh, there's no denying how dazzling he is and how incredible his stuff is. He's filthy. Although, I have to tell you, like, watching this guy in his first game back throwing 102 miles an hour, I mean, I am just like, bro, take your foot off the gas a little bit. You know, like, he missed a year plus, and I just don't believe – and you know, I've always said this. I do not buy into guys that throw 102 miles an hour. Uh, just all they do is throw gas. And I know he has so much more than that, but he throws the ball so hard on every pitch, even on his slider. Everything is so hard. That's, in my view, why he gets injured. That's all these guys that throw gas and nothing but. They don't last. I mean, how many times are we going to watch this guy's arm fall off before he realizes he doesn't have to throw 100 miles an hour on every single pitch? I mean it. Like, his first game in 13 months, and he's throwing 102 in the first inning on every single pitch? That doesn't worry you at all? Uh, it worries me. Uh, it would absolutely worry me if I was a Med fan, that's for sure. Uh, that is throughout, like you say, there's just no reason for it. Uh, you don't, first game out, you're only throwing 60 pitches. I get he wants to let it loose a little bit, but <laughs> I mean, this guy's got 102 in the first inning. Let's settle down, bro, uh, and make sure that you're there for the long haul. Uh, he is scheduled, uh, if they stay in, in turn, of course, uh, to face the Braves uh, on Sunday, Scotty. We will see uh, if DeGrom does face them out at City Field. The Nationals on their side, of course, it was a busy day for them as well, trading away. Their 23-year-old franchise player, Juan Soto, to the San Diego Padres. Here, Scotty, it's Nationals general manager Mike Rizzo uh, talking about the trade of Juan Soto. We, we, did, we did feel that, that we were not going to be able to extend him, and, and we felt that at this time, with, with two and a half years remaining, three playoffs run, runs uh, uh, available to Juan Soto, he would never be at, at more value than he is today. And uh, that's that's what we that's what we predicated on. There was no there was no edict to trade him or not to trade him. It was business as usual. Uh, uh, ownership gave me the, uh, the 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 latitude to to make a, a good baseball deal if I if I felt it was uh, a franchise altering uh, deal. And uh, it, it turned out that we got one to our liking and uh, it, and it worked. And uh, again, kudos to the other other side for uh, for making it work. Yeah, I actually uh, agree with all of that except one thing. I, I don't agree that uh, he'll ever be more valuable than at 23. I believe at 26, he will be even more valuable because the numbers that he's going to put up in San Diego will be bigger and better than the numbers that he's put up from the jump of his career till now. He's done amazing things. I do not believe the first five years of his career – are going to be better than the next five years. Between the ages of 23 and 28, 29 years old, this guy could end up being Roberto Clemente. That's how good he is. So I believe when three years is up, I'm not talking about he'll be 26. Three years after that, he'll be 29. We're talking about giving 
Aaron Judge, $400 million. He's 30 years old already. This kid is 23. Rizzo's right. He got an incredible deal. He got incredible young superstar, minor league talent, ready to go. But I do not agree that he'll be less valuable three years from now. He'll be more valuable in three years. Uh, certainly the case. Uh, now out in San Diego, uh, Rizzo also had the World Series ring on from a couple years ago. Uh, let everybody know that that is still the goal, of course, to get more of those in Washington. The Mariners are beating the Yankees the, this afternoon. They are beating the Yankees again. Uh, of course, last night they did 8-6. to six. Rizzo homered in his fourth straight game, Scotty. Did not matter. Let's, though, hear from Jordan Montgomery. Of course, he goes to the St. Louis Cardinals in the deal for Harrison Bader. Uh, as we will see a couple times today, not everybody is happy uh, when trade deadline comes around. We can add Jordan Montgomery, Scotty, to that list after he found out he was going to St. Louis. I mean, these are my, this is my family. Um, this is all I know. I've been playing with the same guys for years. I'm going to miss Higgy, going to miss Judge. I'm um, going to miss J-Mo. Got a new some. Great trainers, Fonzie's taking great care of me. Um, become one of my, my best friends. Um, it's just kind of tough. Who else? Brendan. How much more difficult does it make it knowing that the Yankees are building something here? They're, they're, they've been adding <laughs> at the deadline, and yes, now you're heading out. <laughs> I really haven't thought about that. Um, <laughs> I'm leaving the worst. I'm, I'm leaving the best yeah, team in the league. I haven't really thought about it. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah, listen, uh, I'll give him this much, right? It's I get it, brutal that he's you know losing all his friends, but this is big boy time. You know, you're in the major leagues. These things happen. He's going to a great franchise. I don't care what anybody says. They win championships. Uh, they sell out. It's a great baseball town. I mean. People always just talk about the Dodgers and the Yankees. That's all anybody ever talks about. That's, that's what's wrong with baseball. St. Louis has always been one of the greatest baseball towns uh, the game has ever known. And I think he'll love it there eventually. Ask Bader. The kid said it was the greatest thing he's ever experienced in his life playing for the Cardinals. Trust me, the kid will be fine. He's too young to realize what just happened to him. Uh, and he might see the Yankees uh, very quickly, Scotty. They, of course, are in St. Louis this weekend, uh, and he may start against his former team on Saturday night uh, in St. Louis, his first start for the Redbirds. Uh, that is a very, very tough spot uh, for him, of course. Uh, the Jays beat the Rays last night 3-1. to one. This happened just as we were going off the air yesterday. The Royals get Whit Merrifield, or excuse me, the Royals trade Whit Merrifield to the Blue Jays. Scotty. Uh, so another bat for the Toronto lineup with Whit Merrifield last night. And of course, he will get his vaccination. He was one of the guys on the Royals uh, who did not play in Toronto a couple of weeks ago. Braves, after losing this afternoon, they did win last night 13 to 1. Spencer Strider had 13 strikeouts for them. The Phillies Jesus. made a lot of moves themselves. 13 for him last night, Scotty. He got back on the horse, that's for sure. Uh, oh, the nice. Phillies. Made a couple of moves yesterday. Noah Syndergaard, David Robertson, who I saw actually close out the game today. Brandon Marsh from the Angels. Uh, here is general manager Dave Dombrowski, Scotty, feeling that his ball club is better today with those three acquisitions. Well, I, I think we're better. I don't think, you know, how much better are we? I, I mean, I, I know we're a better ball club. I mean, I think we tried to address, um, we're trying to address some certain areas. The last 15 minutes or so, Anaheim came back to us and and asked us uh, about the Syndergaard. We've been talking to them about Syndergaard for a couple of days, and they finally, I guess, whatever else they were working out didn't didn't work for them. You know, I, I got to tell you, one of the things that I think uh, Noah has really become deft at in uh, Anaheim, particularly more so, frankly, for me than even when he was with the Mets. When he was with the Mets, Mike, you know, he was very overpowering. It was all about blowing guys away. When he went to the Angels, the guy started getting like 80% ground outs. This guy had guys knocking the ball into the dirt. 
this is major league baseball. There is nothing easier in the sport of baseball than ground balls to the infield of a major league team. It's like taking candy from a baby. 95% of the time they handle grounders and throw the guy out. This guy got more ground ball outs in Anaheim than anyone I've ever seen in my life. His ball was biting. Everyone was knocking it into the dirt. He got millions of strikeouts and ground ball outs. His one loss record was not indicative of how tough he was with the Angels. The team around him absolutely was hair dryer city. They never score runs. They're awful. It made him look bad. But if you looked, I always told you his ERA was nice. He was giving up three runs a game. That was it. And then the Angels would score one or two runs because they suck. I think this guy is going to be nasty with the Phillies. I got to tell you, that rotation with Wheeler, Nola, Syndergaard, Gibson, and Suarez, I actually think Gibson and Suarez are the weakest links. Yeah, Ranger Danger Suarez there uh, at the back. But it's the three main guys is what matters, Scotty, because if the Phillies continue to play well and they are one of the wild cards in the National League, is those right. three guys, Wheeler, Nola, and Syndergaard, is that good enough for them to beat one of these big lineups in a playoff series? They might play the Padres or the Mets or the Dodgers. Are those three guys good enough to beat those teams? Yes, they are. I mean, uh, Wheeler is very dangerous. Nola goes out and gives you massive innings, and Syndergaard's going to keep the ball in the infield. Uh, they're going to get outs. Uh, they can win games, and they got – Schwarbaum and they're getting Harper back. They are a sneaky, decent team for sure. It'll be interesting to see if they can upset like a Mets or a, you know, Braves or a Dodgers. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. Maurice Allen, 2015-2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion, 2017 World Number One. Me personally, I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. What's your story? The morning after. How do you evaluate Cleveland's team win total for 2022? You know, I start as we should with those six games. And you that is a lot of times you talk about win totals, that might paint the picture. If you feel like the Browns can go four and two in those six games, you're easily going to push the over, right? Because you're going to ask Deshaun Watson to go basically 500 in the games that he can play. And you assume he'll do better than that. I don't know about four and two. You know, I think three and three is certainly more optimistic. The Sports Grid Network. The Bostonian versus the book. This is a Nothing. federal crime. He will lose his team. If there's any evidence, what you're telling me is, if there's any evidence, recording, email, or the like, that can show that this conversation happens, because clearly it happened. But I, I wasn't. I wasn't serious. The investigation no. clears that it happened. The conversation about throwing games to Brian Flores from the owner happened. The Bostonian versus the book. Fantasy Sports Today. So CJ Abrams was a former first round pick of the Padres. He could obviously play the infield, he could play the outfield. I think really the key name in this as far as the offensive future for the Padres is Robert Hassel III. James Wood, I believe is also a top 20 prospect for the Padres. And the reason why it feels a little bit light is because the Padres are just like kind of getting Josh Bell as like a throw in. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. Syndergaard goes to the Philadelphia Phillies. So the Angels send Syndergaard back to the National League East, where of course, Scotty, he will face 
his old team, the Mets, quite a bit. He will not start for the Angels tonight. A couple more that just went down. The Yankees send Jordan Montgomery to the St. Louis Cardinals for outfielder Harrison Bader. Oh, I uh, love so Bader. Bader to the Yankees. The Sports Grid Network. A couple things, Carver. Hi, that we got to slip in here. Uh, Mafia just gave you something about the appeal uh, that you yes. can give us information on. And if you could also throw in the uh, news of the Page Beckers. Uh, yes. Well, let's talk. This is Deshaun Watson here. The league has filed its appeal in the Deshaun Watson suspension, Scotty. So, of course, the deadline was tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., they are letting you know now uh, they are filing the appeal, uh, which means uh, you know where it goes, Scotty, uh, into the hands uh, of Roger Goodell. Now, Roger can, uh, I think he can pass that off to somebody else. Why would he do that? They already passed it off to Sue Robinson. Yeah. They didn't like what she had to say. Uh, so yeah. you know who, who's coming down with the hammer here. Uh, it's going to be Roger, and he's going to go for a year, I bet. They haven't said that yet. Yeah, That's well, you know, Let's just face facts. I mean, and Mike DeCourcy is going to talk about it on this show today. He wrote an article in the Sporting News about Sue Robinson just basically torching her. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, frankly, let's just get down to business here. She was a gigantic, colossal failure and waste of time. I mean, she butchered this like cooking dinner. I mean, she just, she burnt the dinner. I mean, she did a bad job. You cannot say all the things that she said that this guy did and then give him six games. She talks about his egregious behavior and then gives him six games. I mean, she might as well have given him two games. It was so embarrassing. Uh, and then I think Goodell is going to slap him with more games for sure. He's the final word. There's not going to be anyone else. No one has any juice like he has. It's his call. Expect something drastic, and I'm guessing tomorrow. Yeah, look, this will now go into uh, we'll find out what Goodell ends up doing. And then there will be a legal battle after that because clearly the Players Association and Watson will then sue the league and say right. uh, that's no good. So this is just going to keep uh, being a court thing now, Scotty, until we get the final number. And what about Paige Beckers? Uh, ACL for Paige, uh, right? She's done uh, all year, uh, finished for UConn. Oh, play this that's, year. that's the second one she's blown out. Awful.